And so we are now ready for our third presentation of the day. Our third presentation of the day. Alex from, wait, so you're from Bulgaria, correct? From Bulgaria, right. Ah, so it is my pleasure uh, to introduce to you, you're going to be giving a talk on WPA, sec, uh, Alex Donov. Thank you, guys. So today I will talk about uh, the WPA SEC, which is currently the largest known uh, handshake, WPA handshake database. So what exactly is this? Uh, we are doing uh, collection and processing of wireless network captures, which are submitted by our users. Then we identify these handshakes. We maintain uh, carefully crafted uh, dictionaries to check against that. And there are contributors that are contributing their uh, GPU power. So we can try to crack these handshakes and submit all the results in real time, which are available. So WPASEC works with uh, several open source tools. WPASEC is also open source. And uh, you can see over there on every slide the live installation and the GitHub repository for it. So we're using the HCX tools for handshake identification. HCX tools is a very interesting uh, set of tools. It's uh, pretty new, from, uh, it's developed since uh, one year, maybe a bit more. And um, the other is well-known uh, Rotor Kagan PC, which uh, uh, works for identifying the known uh, PSK generation algorithms. Of course, the cracking is done both by Hashcat and uh, John the Ripper, the bleeding version. And uh, we use uh, Wiggle, thanks to the guys from there, for our AP geolocation. So the brief stats about uh, the service, we now have more than half a million handshakes submitted. Uh, as you see there, uh, we're doing this since 2011. So this is... Uh, a lot of, <laughs> those are a lot of handshakes. Uh, you see the route capture data and our success is around 27%. Uh, known algorithm generation was hitting around uh, 5%, but I'm sure we can do better. Yeah. And from our crafted dictionaries, it's around 10% of the case space already cracked because as you know, uh, this is pretty greedy algorithm to crack, and uh, these are the good results there. Of course, we are striving for more. The geo distribution, based on Uyghur results, you can see that uh, there is almost, there is no place where uh, you can't have uh, handshakes there. So a lot of people are submitting, our users are around uh, 4,000. So, this is uh, pretty much very interesting to see how and uh, what are using, users are using on different uh, parts of the world. So let's see what uh, we're doing there. First, we have to get the handshake. We all know that how does this happen. We all have been using back in time the old school AP attack to authenticate active clients and get the handshake, right? Um, this is very good because uh, we can uh, extract the APBSAD and then we can geolocate that AP. But uh, uh, as you also know, in Crown data res uh, or do uh, bad connection transmissions, etc., we maybe in some places have to apply the AP NOS uh, correction. Of course, we can do better and uh, do AP less attack, so we can attack directly the client which is also uh, not so new thing, at least. And uh, there is no need for noise correction since we control the workflow with that client. And here we have to be very fast. We have to work better and there is no need for AP noise correction. And of course, we can leverage uh, some more interesting attacks on higher levels. Uh, the tool that uh, we are suggesting to use for submissions in WPSEC is uh, HCX Dump Tool, which is part of HCX Tools. And uh, since uh, 
last uh, week, it has a lot of more interesting features. And of course, before submitting to the database, please don't clean, work on this, and uh, do anything with these captures because uh, you may destroy some valuable information that's in there. The cracking part is also very well known. You know, uh, I don't think that I have to explain that, but um, uh, basically PBKDF2, uh, HHA1, um, and after that, depending on the uh, version of the WOPA, we're using the HMAC MD5, HMAC HHA1, or uh, with WPA2 CMAC, we're using uh, OMAC. So this is all implemented in uh, John the Ripper and uh, Hashcat, and of course it's implemented in uh, WPA sec server side, so we can do it better. About the noise correction. We all know about the noise correction and uh, we are very much using it because we don't know to spend years or many GPU power to crack something that uh, can be cracked in the end. Uh, we can uh, also try to rely on the uh, replay counter field, so we have to know what exactly the noise correction will use, but uh, this is uh, not very good solution because often uh, the APs uh, uh, keep the same replay counter field. So from the uh, database, around 5% of all these half a million handshakes that were cracked because not, all, not every one of these uh, half million was cracked, of course, just 27%. So we needed the noise correction in 5% of these handshakes. Uh, the noise correction can be uh, negative or positive. You see the uh, persons and can be implemented uh, as a mathematics with uh, Big Indian and Wall Indian. Here you see the results, of course. A lot of routers are uh, MIPS based, so Big Indian and it's normal to see around 90% of them. Uh, again, of course, HCX tools can deal with these situations and can uh, reduce this a lot. So, uh, the new kit on the block, the PNK ID. Uh, I believe Atom wrote on the a forum post about that and the last version of uh, uh, Hashcat has these additional modes. It was released just before DEF CON. So the idea here is uh, that uh, if you have uh, networks with roaming enabled and increasing the I standard, uh, you will have this uh, PMK ID, which is uh, part of RSN information element. Here you see the uh, values that, uh, how is uh, PMK ID value uh, calculated. So here we just need uh, the Mac AP, Mac STA, and which come from the uh, association requests, association requests, <laughs> the association request, prop response, and you need the message one from the Yahoo. So there is no need for uh, all this uh, uh, hard to get. Uh, parts of the handshakes like before. Of course, there is no need uh, from loss correction, so if you get the PNK ID, uh, you'll be on the safe side that you're cracking. If you have uh, this uh, dictionary, uh, this password in the dictionary, you will get it. So next part is the hardware, what we're using to collect that. Uh, of course, everybody builds uh, his favorite Gern. Uh, we are using uh, Raspberry Pis, like this one. What you see here is a ink display, e-paper display, uh, that uh, is not using any uh, more power that we need. And with this, uh, it's a rather big battery. We can uh, run this for around two or three days without stopping. The adapters we're using is are um, running based, or anything that uh, works better. On the HCX tools, you can see, you can uh, find uh, 
different uh, types of adapters that we have tested and know that are working. Here you see the OpenVRT based device with hardware antenna mod. It's just a link battery powered router. All this is very cheap. And of course here, it's again a Raspberry Pi based solution, but with way better antenna that uh, give us a lot more power. Of course, you can use whatever you want for this. So, when you already uh, when you have the captures, and the first thing that you have to do is to issue your own WPSX uh, key. There is no some uh, stride registration process. You just go uh, hit the issue key, and that's it. So uh, with this key, you can access the results when they are cracked. On the server side, we're processing with HTXP Cap 2. Uh, we check for duplicates. Uh, of course, uh, we're doing a lot more like uh, trying to crack via PN key. So if uh, we already have this uh, uh, network with uh, this ESID, we will get the hit and there is no need for uh, this whole thing to go to the crackers uh, to uh, exhaust their energy. We're doing the Wigo APG location and of course if we are not having the results uh, from router kick in PC, uh, this goes to handshake crackers. So, the guys that uh, Previously mined Bitcoins or I don't know their favorite cryptocurrency. They can spend one of their GPUs to run a help crack. This downloads the handshakes and dictionaries and feeds them to cracker. It starts with the oldest handshakes and with the, uh, those dictionaries that are with fewer words. And this gives some fair results for most people. What we're doing here is because we have so much handshakes, we're do, uh, we doing the ESID combine. So we are fetching all networks that have one and the same ESID. So we are doing the heavy part, the PBTDF2, just once, and uh, we're attacking with uh, our dictionaries. The other part is automatic dictionary count because if you have a very powerful GPU for one of these small dictionaries that you see for around 1 million uh, word count in it, uh, you are spending uh, around 30 seconds to initialize the GPU and after that, for example, 3 or 4 seconds to push the full dictionary there. So we are combining dictionaries automatically, uh, so it's scaling uh, depending on the number of GPUs we have and uh, the GPU power. With the, when uh, every, uh, something is cracked, you accept one or more PSK by hash, or, by hash of the network or the BSID. We are doing the validations as far as we can. And in the real time, we generate this cracked TXT GZ dictionary. It's over there. Okay. It's over there. So it's real time. You can get every password that has been cracked there. And there is a separate dictionary that is uh, for those that uh, are coming from a uh, router K game. They're separated because uh, most of the time they look uh, very. Uh, random things, of course, they are not so random. That's why they <laughs> get to the router key again. And, uh, but they are not really interesting if you want to use this dictionary for your, your own assessments. So, what we've learned up to now. There are a lot of uh, vendors and ISPs that uh, are still using uh, default BSAD, SAD based algorithms. In database, there are a lot of these hidden and we hope to get them revealed. We identified this and continue for that. Uh, there is a lot of uh, that uh, 
going to uh, in this part, a lot of people get uh, the router firmware, catch it, and try to find these default algorithms. And with this, uh, with the WPA uh, sec results, we are validating their results, and it gets uh, pretty interesting. A lot of, of course, developing uh, such a tool like HCX tools uh, gets. Um, we hit a lot of uh, Linux kernel and uh, driver bugs. We try to fill as much as possible um, bugs, and a lot of them are already are already fixed. So this is a good thing for everyone that is using such a hardware. We also identified some optimizations and improvements in hash cat and jump the ripper, the ripper and the help will get it those, also those better. And uh, in the end, uh, WPASEC is very useful as us in source because, uh, uh, for example, you're doing a remote penetration test on some uh, bank. You also can go on WPASEC and uh, on Wiggle, see what are the networks there. After that, go to WPASEC and see if somebody already captured some network hash there. So. Uh, from now on, you will be uh, way further until you already have something to work on and to try for password reuse and etc. And what's next with this project? It's uh, running uh, from some years, but I'm sure that there are a lot of more hidden algorithms and we'll be very glad to check those out. Um, the interesting thing about these default algorithms is that there is info on them on different forums, wikis, and etc. Very, very uh, spread and um, not really useful when you look for something. And I think it, this will be a nice place to collect them all and to improve it. Of course, the web interface, I really don't have a full screenshot because it's really awful. But this has to be gone from 19th and we have to do something better. Of course, it will be nice to introduce some API for DB query. So a lot of guys will have uh, the possibility to dig in this database. But for now, if you have some ideas, I'll be very happy to discuss them. Just drop me a mail and uh, we'll work it out. And of course, prepare for WP3. There are some speculations and uh, I'm sure that uh, we will think of something, but uh, let's see the first client implementations and server calls. So we'll see how this happened, but since in 2018, uh, we still phase out uh, WEP and WPA in the first version, so I'm sure this will not go around soon. So thank you guys.